Hello, ladies. I hope you're all doing well. I'm Mrs. Sherman. Welcome to Homemakers Radio. I'm speaking from captivity still, and I hope that you are thriving. And I want to talk more about that at another time in this video, perhaps. And what I'm doing is providing a place that you can listen while you go and get your work done. I have many different things I listen to, and I can think of things that are a little more amusing than this particular uh, series of videos, but you're welcome if you've come, and I'm very, very honored that you came. I love this era that we're living in because you don't have to go somewhere to put on some kind of a class for anyone. You can do it from my place to your place, and you don't have to leave your children or your home. But before you go and do your work, I want to encourage you to uh, also get dressed and to look your very best for your home because as you have discovered home is everything this is more than just a place to stay this is a place to thrive this is a place to do business this is a place to build your family uh, interaction and your relationships this is a place to get to know uh, and search your own heart and get to know God and this is a place where you'll study and where you'll create so that's why we want to take the ultimate good care of it and take care of ourselves because we're the ones that will encourage other people so before you go to get dressed or to do your work I'd like to show you my teacup today it's um, called Duchess and I would say that it's probably from the 1970s, probably it was a gift in a gift box, and it was given to me by one of my relatives, and I'm really enjoying it, kind of goes with the blue that I'm wearing today. And so the, the first thing to do, I think, in getting ready for the home is to get dressed, and that will also solve some of the problem of wondering what you're going to do and what your purpose is is to get dressed and to dress as though you mean business as though you are doing something very formal even though you will be cleaning and washing and taking care of people uh, to look at it in a spiritual sense and not simply in a in a material sense and that makes all the difference in the world many of us grew up working but we were taught that this is just work and you have to do it. And uh, But when I read the Emily Barnes books, I discovered that how she put some kind of little touch in everything and joy in the simplest of tasks and made the place look good afterwards. And how she thrived at home really did inspire me. And I'd like to share some of that with you. And that's why I'm doing these videos. Now, uh, one of the reasons that I'm doing them is because if you've ever heard anything about me or you've heard anybody talk about me or you've read something about me that you could come and actually see me and hear me and um, you can also communicate with me you can email me you can leave a comment if you like I don't have comments on the uh, channel but you're welcome to go to the link that I've provided in the description box and leave a, a comment there and see what else uh, because I'm just preparing these for the post that I'm doing and on the post I'll be putting other pictures and other information and so I would appreciate it if you would listen to this over there now one of the things that uh, came up recently was I was talking last time about inviting Texas to colonize Oregon because they do such a good job with their state and I got some email telling me how disappointed they were because uh, they thought Florida was a better state and that I should have invited Florida to colonize Oregon so here's what I will do you're right you know I like Florida too uh, and, and several other states I will divide Oregon up so that Florida gets the western part which is on the coastal and has a lot of waterways and is plush and um, rather mountainy and and has a lot of uh, lakes uh, which Florida is used to and then um, I'll give Texas the eastern part of Oregon and they can colonize that because that's they've got the beautiful ranches and and they've got some beautiful desert cities up there and 
they have the high desert and they have the pretty uh, painted hills and um, so I'll divide it between both Texas and Florida so I won't hurt anybody's feelings. You can come and colonize us because it already has been colonized by foreign countries and foreign banks and foreign uh, products and foreign industries. So I think it'd be very easy for those two states to colonize us. And I'd rather be a colony of both those states. And it would certainly improve things in Oregon. We would like to have the freedom that both Florida and Texas have. And also the gumption and the independence and uh, throw off some of our oppressors. So so I want to make it fair. If there are any other states, I'll have to think of a different way to divide it. So, um, And the other thing uh, was a question. There were a couple of questions asked that I get a lot. And one of them was, uh, and I do get this one a lot, and that is if I if I uh, make something and I want to sell it and uh, how do I know how far I've gone in business um, and gone too far as far as a homemaker and I think that's just the best way to phrase it is uh, how do I know when it's I've gone too um, I've taken on too much well this is how I would know um, even if you're just getting ready for a fair or you're getting ready for a um, uh, a fall, t you know, sale table with crafts and goodies and things that you've made, sometimes we all, you know, have done that. Um, you have to be very careful because when you know where you have taken it too far and where it's looming larger in your life than, than your home is when you have to scramble to catch up to your home. When you put everything you have into this hobby or this um, this selling uh, effort and, uh, and your home is just like something in the back of your mind and you give it a, a swipe or you hurry through it. Or you also know you've gone too far when you are always behind in everything at home. When you don't have things caught up. And when you're having to hurry a lot to get your normal housework done and there and when you hurry you don't have the enjoyment of it and you don't uh, you're really not home making you're just uh housekeeping and hurrying through things to make it look like you've uh, you can manage while you put most of your heart and your life into something else and that's one of the things I'd like to warn people about when you get into when you're young and you get into something like um, voice lessons or piano and then they start the competitions and your teacher wants to put you in a uh, a recital and pretty soon you're home practicing all the time and not doing other things with your life because uh, you've taken this course and, and it's running you and that's when you know it's you've gone it's too much and so uh, if you want to try something you know there's nothing wrong with with learning something or trying something but you don't make it you don't go all the way with it and make it such a, a big experience that you leave out that part of your life that's going to give you the most contentment especially as you grow older and uh, I've warned people this about sports too. You can be a great swimmer, but um, that's not going to take you through your elderly years and through your childbearing years and through all the little things that you have to do at home. Um, and you need to choose things to do that are go is going to give you um, more love for your family and for your home and for your children. So just keep it keeping everything in perspective is very helpful and remember the uh, the Bible talks about women and young women especially in the church that and I think it was addressed to the church uh, ladies that they were to um, be keepers at home and to be and to show love and care for their families and that doesn't mean you're limited because let me tell you where you're going to learn a lot is in homeschooling because then you get to go into history and geography and art and um, architecture and you get to learn about science and and you get to learn about the stars you get to learn so much that you are it's so fulfilling and so there's where you're going to get a lot of your fulfillment plus you're um, having a kind of an adventure together with your family, with your children. So,
Now, there will be some pressure in housework anyway. Even if you don't have other interests, there will be some pressure. You will look at some jobs and say, I, you know, all of a sudden you'll start to feel the stress and your chest will tighten up and your throat will tighten up and you, you don't want to tackle it. But here's an idea that might help, and that is to use every pressure, every pressure you feel as a signal um, that it's an opportunity to develop some kind of strategy or some kind of strength or to learn from it or to use it in some way to benefit you and others. So that is a challenge and... In, in all of these things, even if you're keeping a, a little shop or you're, um, you're wanting to sell things, always think of yourself, uh, am I in compliance with God's will? And if you feel that when things start to irritate you at home, your housekeeping and the things that aren't done and just being there, then maybe, then just maybe your mind and your heart have been taken far away from it. And that could be one of the dangers of getting into something else. Now, I think business is going to change. I see it all around me. The home is now uh, the big center for everything. And I see people who are using this um, captivity as an opportunity. And I see that although some people can't go into stores, uh, because things are closed or because they, uh, for health reasons, they don't want to. Um, I know of several families that have taken uh, their skills and made things, put them in a box, and then invited someone or people, people they know over for a shopping spree of, you know, gifts, buy gifts for your children and grandchildren and and made a special appointment so they could come. I don't know what this is called, <laughs> but it's such a great idea. And back in the olden days, I remember when my children were little, we had a back porch that was not being used and was empty, and I put everything we didn't want back there, things that we um, didn't have enough of, so we um, decided to get something else and put that back in there, and things that we had worn out but didn't want to throw out, things that we had outgrown, things that we uh, didn't use anymore but were still good. We kept it all back there with a little price tag on it and actually sometimes the ladies class would want to go back there and uh, other people that we knew would want to see if they if there's anything they wanted and they like to go back there. Everyone loves to shop and this might take the love of shopping back um, might bring the enjoyment of it back. If, if people have business in their own homes and all it takes is a trunk, a box, or a cabinet that you open up, or a bookshelf, and I enjoy doing it for my uh, descendants and my grandchildren to have things there. Um, they Sometimes the little ones will pretend shop, but I really think that things are going to change. I don't think there's anything wrong with having the fruits of your labors and your hand, the work of your hands there uh, to sell. Just keep it in perspective. Don't go overboard and don't make it. It's very addictive, you know, some of these things. And don't make it your whole life. When you start getting irritated, tired, unhappy at home, um, and getting behind in a lot of stuff or having to rush through a lot of stuff, then you've gone too far. You're putting too much time in that. So, um, now, the other thing is it's a lot of fun to provide little shopping baskets or a little shopping cart. and um, So that, that gives everybody an opportunity to trade without um, without restriction. Now, here's another question that I had. Um, I want to get more into homemaking and housekeeping because that's what you're doing, I hope, while you listen. And uh, so I have heard this before, and it's a very old problem. I'm confused. I'm bored. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Now, that usually comes from either someone very inexperienced in homemaking or uh, extremely young and uh, part of the problem is if you've been in public school that's not going to train you for your home so if 
that was has been your educational experience, then it's very hard afterwards to think what you're going to do because they want you to go into some kind of um, projected career that they have suggested. And uh, they often have career days, if you notice, and everything is there except being a wife, mother, and homemaker. So let's address this first one. I'm confused. Well, you know, God, the Bible says God is not the author of confusion. So you have to look at confusion as something that is not a good thing. Uh, and probably you shouldn't say it uh, because it makes you look weak. It makes you look unreliable. So what you want to do is take that uh, confusion and try to... The reason people are confused is because they're halting between two opinions, like Elijah said. Um, uh, just waffling between two opinions. So that's what causes confusion. You have to decide which path to go on, whether you'll be uh, de dedicated to your home or you're going to have a divided heart or whether you're going to do a good job at home. And I would suggest you start out, a lot of that confusion will go away as to what you should do and how you should do it and about the home. If you will do it to your ultimate best and go beyond what is necessary and make it shine, make it be beyond. Uh, if you are home and you are you don't have your own home but you're living with your, your father and mother, I think it's best to learn. You can get online and learn a lot of things for very little money or none at all about the hospitality industry, for example, and adapt some of that into your home. I did that when I was, um, we had our pretend train. As I studied it, I read about it. I, I read about how, uh, what the service was and what would be provided in each room and, and how uh, you would clean up and how you would uh, cook and how you would um, keep the passengers uh, content. And um, so you can, you can learn a lot about the home and take over your mother's home and make it beautiful and make it nice or learn how she would like it do, to do it and give her uh, some rest and then manage it so that you are preparing for your own future home. And who knows, you might end up staying there and looking after your parents. We don't know what the future is, but um, doing the ultimate best you can and having high standards and high goals in your own house. How many times do you think that a, that a hotel or a restaurant is better, something better than your own house? Well, we don't have to be like that. We can just be the opposite. To me, now that I've got my home uh, the way that I like it and I have uh, learned so much about maintaining it and cleaning it and keeping it fresh. Um, if I go to a hotel or a motel or a restaurant, it seems inferior. So that's what you need to do is be happier at home than you would somewhere else. And even if you went on a holiday or a vacation, you start to see, you know, I could do this better in my own home. <laughs> and so that's what you want to strive for is to go above and beyond what is necessary to make the home a pleasant place to be and then after a while your confusion will totally dissipate when you start working hard and doing a great job you, you're not going to be confused the other one was I'm bored well I had talked to you about that before I've heard this quite a bit is I'm bored and I don't see uh, they're not you're not motivated and or you're not um, you don't have any um, passion for the home or focus on the home and one of the things that I discovered about boredom was from the Bible where it said, do not, do not be weary in well-doing. I spoke of that in the previous video. And uh, so boredom just means uh, you're getting tired of doing something that's good. Or maybe you need to just change it around a little bit. Um, you know, if you're bored with your clothes, you change your, you change into something else, or you get something else, or you make something else. Well, it's the same with uh, with homemaking and home um, housekeeping. You can change your your ritual around. You can change it all around, and you can do the things you do first, do them last, and uh, it makes it more interesting. And do the things that it takes to make it easy for you to uh, to love it there 
do whatever it takes. Do you need to make it prettier? Do you make need to make it cleaner? Cleaner? Do you need to uh, shift things around? There's so much uh, scope for the imagination, as Anne would say, uh, in the home. Now, so do the best you can with what you have. Not don't just do the best you can. Do better than your best. And um, don't hurry through homemaking, but make every action deliberate. And uh, don't just take a swipe at it and, and say this is done, but but be deliberate. You know, you've seen um, you've seen people in the olden days, and they'll um, bring in some wild flowers and set them on the table and give them a little pat or something. They just it's just like this is final, and. Um, they're thinking how how deliberate this is that every action in the home is deliberately done for a reason and as your service to God and so when we have it uh, a spiritual perspective uh, towards it it changes everything it changes your attitude and no longer are you confused or bored um, so be diligent and persevere and be deliberate and do the best you can, do better than your best, excel in it. You might want to look that word up, excel, E-X-C-E-L, and make your efforts, um, make your efforts excellent. And um, don't just get by with something that, you know, when you're raising children, you'll discover this too. They don't like to hurry up a job. They like to take their time and they like to do a good job, uh, really, if they're, if they're not rushed and if they're not having to clean up after someone else or they're not having to finish somebody else's job or if they're not being interrupted, they can actually do a pretty good job and they do better when they're not rushed. Another thing that you can do that's very interesting is if you have no knowledge of homemaking or housekeeping and you have to do something of that nature, Get a little uh, notebook out and start making a step-by-step -step list of how to go about it. And observe. Observe yourself. What do you take down first? What do you clear off first? What do you wash first? What do you... I knew a lady who had written how-to notebooks for all of, all of her children and put one in each room so that if she ever got sick and they had to do something, they could read the how-to book and she had one in the bathroom and it said and she had it uh, hanging by a oh, a string over a over a nail in her bathroom or a hook or something in her bathroom and she had uh, plastic over it so that it wouldn't get wet and plastic on the pages and uh, it was things like how to clean the sink take everything remove everything from the sink spray a solution of uh, dish liquid and water around it uh, uh, wash that, rinse that, and then, you know, uh, dry it, and now put back this, you know, wash the soap, put it back, and she had every tiny little movement you would make. Uh, think about that. If you are having trouble doing it, and you don't know where to start, uh, think about making a how-to notebook, and then it has more meaning. It has uh, more deliberate meaning. And all these things, uh, like making a how-to notebook, that's a great opportunity uh, to do more than just clean. You, now you've made a notebook. So it's, it has one thing just leads to the next. So do the best you can. And uh, do how-to, uh, how to manage things, how to, how to prepare things, how to uh, repair things. Just do how-to at everything. And turn homemaking into something beautiful. Well, there's another how-to notebook for you. How to turn homemaking into something beautiful. And tell what to do. Now, I'm going to uh, introduce a very controversial idea. And because uh, I was listening to uh, the Miramax edition of the movie Emma the other day. And she had uh, one of my favorite phrases is when she said to Harriet, Harriet, you take an idea and run wild with it. And I got to thinking about that. How to take an idea. I know she was talking about it in the negative sense. 
Uh, and, do, and people do take ideas and run wild with it. They'll hear some little end of a phrase or, or, or some little piece of information and they'll just go off and, and think that think the wrong things about it or draw wrong conclusions about it. That's what she was talking about. But I was thinking how to take a good idea and run wild with it. Well, this is how we would have done it in home. Um, I, I really need to call it family education and not homeschooling because it's not exactly confined to the home and it's just everywhere you go you take delight in life and learn how to live and how to think and how to act and um, how to add and subtract <laughs> and uh, take every opportunity to uh, to be alert to life and the opportunity to see um, how to do things and uh, how to analyze things and, and the idea too of how to decide whether or not to say something you know what not to say and what to say and etc well this is something we would have done in our home learning um, and I started it way back in the 1980s but I think a lot of people discovered it, it it's easy to discover when you're at home and you're not you're your mind and your thinking are not fogged up by uh, the public school information and uh, the coming and going all the time and you get to sit, settle down and think a little bit and talk to your children and and you get to have pl plenty of rest and good nutrition and not too much noise and not too many other people and the kids don't have to form relationships with 20 other people you know and so we discovered this and um i will just um i will just give you an example of this little miss lily of the valley and she writes these little books called uh pioneer ribbons and it's about uh allison on the oregon trail okay so she writes these little books or you could write some little book um some little story this is just an example because it doesn't have to be uh creative like that but so Allison then becomes a doll or a paper doll and then the uh, the food mentioned in the stories become a little cookbook and then um, then it's all translated into a reenactment uh, around a tea table where you have pioneer tea and um, and discuss Allison and all her adventures or um, dress like them and then it becomes uh, maybe a uh, a speech that you make um, and and just you you use it to produce more more of now I uh, have thought of also you can use it for art you could maybe draw a picture or paint a picture something depicted in that story and so and then eventually you have your trunk or your box of things that you've made that go with that story and uh and you sell it to your friends or or you just have it uh for your family and uh, so one thing can just lead to another and then you it's like taking a good idea and running wild with it there's so much we can do with something now i'll give you another example is that i taught my sons uh to make a speech because we had a book called speech and drama for the christian school and uh, at the time that was all we could get on it but i felt responsible to teach them how to speak and so one of them uh looked up a word and i believe it was diligence he really liked that word and did a speech on the word diligence did examples from history examples from um contemporary life and uh, suggestions and uh, just different kinds of uh, ways of looking at that word and how you could apply it to your life, how you could live it. And then, of course, he wrote it all down and it became a little booklet. We went to the printers in those days. You went to the printers and you had them printed off and he made maybe 12 little booklets. And um, then uh, he was invited to speak at one time to a group of young people and then um we had things things just sprang from that there were just other things you could do from it and uh 
and he made a, I believe he even made a workbook that went with it, you know, just added that. So one thing can lead to the next. So take an idea and run wild with it. I uh, have Thrive classes for my descendants. And so not only do we, uh, do I encourage them to teach me something and uh, to do something and then to report back, then we have... Um, we have the mini journals that we put all the information in and then that will be something that we can share and teach someone else and that can be our our manual our teaching manual and then we can have um thrive um uh, thrive tea and <laughs> we can have um a visit to thrive in and we can create so much around it and then uh so with housework and homemaking, there's so much uh, potential there. You can go way beyond just cleaning it and trying to get it out of the way, but looking at it in a different way. Looking at it as though it's a God-given place for you to thrive, a God-given place for you to encourage your children to thrive. And I'll tell you something, is people don't thrive on um, constant backtop criticism, contradiction, and... Um, and discontent they don't they don't thrive on that and so they'll have to give up some things if they if you really want if they really want to thrive and you want to see light in their eyes and happiness in their face and and uh, a joy in their hearts then you have to they will have to give up some things they'll have to give up contradicting contradicting and arguing I am told uh, is a way of stalling people I don't know if you remember back in the olden days when a teacher uh, was not liked in the public school. Uh, a child in the uh, class did not like, uh, found her subject boring or his subject boring and so would ask a question or talk back or contradict or start an argument to keep an embroglio going so to avoid listening to the uh, the boring lesson. And in a way... Arguing, talking back, contradicting is a way of controlling, and it also keeps um, keeps the family in a mess, so they can't really ever reach their full potential. Uh, I, in the past, have had uh, um, situations where I have had to um, maybe avoid someone because they tended to be like that. Um, and you don't want to get in any kind of conflict with them. And if you get in a conflict with someone, like I told you last time, if you start a war with someone, that's a big distraction from your home and from what you're trying to achieve and from all the talents that you want to pursue uh, because they'll get your mind um, whirling around and around over something that they said that was contradictory or was... Uh, was argumentative and now you're busy trying to think of all these um, answers and you're silently debating in your head but you're not really focusing on your sewing and you're not really focusing on your um, your homemaking and on your your garden and the and the beauty of life you really aren't uh, and you're not making up your stories and you're not doing all those things that is are privileged you're privileged they're for you for you to do now one thing you can do that see there's many things that are needed in captivity and I have uh, made a list of them and is to make a how how to book on how to turn housework into some kind of advantage and it's like taking a good idea and running wild with it how to make cleaning up the kitchen into something else uh, that's a challenge isn't it to think of how would you do that um, it's like I said, um, you teach a child to read and then that becomes a speech and then that becomes um, a booklet and then that becomes an influence uh, and it just goes on. And so if you teach yourself to run your household well, it can become something else. Now, I have finally managed mine uh, to the point where I can have um, an event here. And I still have a, a long ways to go in two areas of my house. But I can have an event here and not run out of food, not have to go to the grocery store. And I can have an event here and not uh, not have to find anything, not be confused, and uh, not have too much clutter around. And so 
that is the thing is that home isn't just a place where you crash and you eat and then you clean up and then you go get more groceries and then you eat again and everything but you want to use it for its other potentials there are many other things you can do i had um, a family art class here and i've had we're going to have many more things here and so having been a homeschooler doesn't mean that i'm finished because i'm going to perpetuate that i'm going to keep going see how far i can go with it and um, turn turn my home into things that i would have things i would have liked to do but couldn't at the time that mine were learning um, i can do that for my descendants so sometimes it takes another generation to uh, realize the um, potential that you wanted and uh, and it's very satisfying too so so you could write a little um, how-to book on how to turn homemaking into something beautiful uh, so I'm working on how to take a good idea and run wild with it <laughs> now I remember uh, reading the book Christy way back uh, was it printed in was it was it first published in the late 1960s I'm not sure but I did read it and uh, I remember Miss Alice told Christy she asked her this question she said do you really want to teach school or are you just running away from home and so we have to realize that if you get to thinking about other things that you want to do ask the question are you really do you really want to do this thing or are you just trying to avoid the housework and so some of you that are home and that are uh, don't have your own homes yet and you're still kind of learning at your mother's elbow you need to think about the uh, it's just like I told you about in a school uh, kids would distract the teacher if they didn't like the work and get them involved in uh, trying to explain something complicated or arguing or something or something like that well you can do the same thing at home if you're home and you really don't want to do the housework and you really aren't interested in it you start getting in an argument and um, or trying to do or trying to go out and do something else that you find more exciting or start a hobby that you go you run wild with because uh, it takes up so much time and then you can avoid housework so I always remembered that phrase by Miss Alice and she said um, do you really want to teach or are you just running away from home <laughs> so I think it's very important to thrive in the home and I will not give you a schedule but I will say this if you'll get yourself ready and you'll get dressed first and uh, prepare yourself you'll regret it it's just like Murphy's Law if you don't uh, then you'll be needed suddenly and you'll be really dashing to get ready um, even if you're not expecting anything get ready and um, pray exercise uh, good nutrition and all these things help put you in the right mood for it and the home is more important than any place out there this is another thing that has helped us I think during captivity is that we've become less dependent on anything out there to give us to supply us uh, to supply our needs and yes uh, some of the things that we used to like to do are not available to us now but we're learning to create a life for ourselves and it is a beautiful life indeed in fact without the distractions of that commercial world people are just doing better and more um, creative than ever and I think it's really important I talked to you about just a second ago about people who um, constantly want to argue or they they start the argument by contradicting right away um, is that the less contact with these people who who derail you from this good thinking on things that are good lovely and true the less contact you have the better um, even Jesus knew that we would have the tendency to be discouraged and he told the apostles if people don't receive you shake the dust off your feet and go on to someone who will and uh, that's not to say being being cruel to anyone or being too harsh but just uh, 
figure that there will be some people who will um, will be argumentative and just shrug it off. And I think the best thing that you can do to people like that is to not answer them. Or if you're really smart, a lot smarter than I, have an answer that that shuts them down. I haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> So, captivity culture. Now, this has been interesting. I have been busy putting my garden in, and I haven't uh, strained, stressed myself over it, whereas before, because I had so many other things to do out there and so many obligations that I had and errands to run and other things uh, that I'm now doing online or having someone do for me, uh, I was always in a rush, and so when it came time to put the garden in, I would try to do it uh, all at once and exhaust myself. Well, now, every day, I go out there and I just do a little square of dirt and uh, let it progress naturally, and so I'm enjoying it a lot more. Now, I used to hang up the clothes on the line in the middle of a hot summer to get dry, and I'd feel uh, rushed, and I'd feel uh, intensely... Um, tight and tense and I could not go out there and really enjoy looking at the the tree in the breeze and listen to the birds and feel the warm sun on my skin and and really enjoy hanging it up well now I do because I'm not busy thinking about somewhere something else that I have to do and I I enjoy waking up in the morning thinking I don't uh have to go anywhere because I used to be because of the mad rush of the world, you have to get to a place early in order to pay a bill or get a car repaired or um, exchange something or or find something and and uh, it's really important things that are really important things like um, a good pair of clippers for your garden <laughs> and uh, things that you have to go get and you have to get there early so you could get a good parking spot and then get home before it got to be really rushed. Um, and even though I'm out in the country, we do a lot of our trade in the city. So, uh, but now that I'm free of that, I am finding that I am enjoying more those little things that should be enjoyed in the home, like hanging out your clothes or like even washing your dishes. And I remember my mother-in-law, she liked to wash dishes and, uh, she, I never liked it because I was from a big family and that was before dishwashers, but she liked it. She said she just relax, it relaxed her. And uh, this was in the day before rubber gloves even, and she just would wash them and she took her time. And um, it's interesting to watch her too. There was just something quite uh, musical about it. And so now, um, so captivity culture is a little bit like... Um, do you remember some of you ladies from the olden days uh, going to an antique store or finding some item like a uh, a vessel, a cup, some porcelain, uh, maybe a carved wood box, and you look at the bottom and it would say, made during the, uh, I got captivity on my mind, made during the occupation. Do you remember that? You can still find those. So wouldn't it be interesting on the tags on your dresses that you make to write made during captivity <laughs> and uh, made during um, captivity on on the things that you make. Uh, and uh, I mean even a pie. <laughs> so you can make a whole culture out of it and maybe uh, come out of the other side of this happier and more creative and more organized and I was talking to a family recently who said that they had really benefited from being in captivity because they finally got their garage cleaned out and their attic cleaned out and um, so I thought about captivity clothing you know um, I've been reading this book called um, Calico Chronicles, Calico Chronicles, it was about Texas, and it was about 
uh, the women during the Civil War, when there was a blockade on their on the cotton that they had, um, uh, the cloth to get it to the factories in the north, there was a a blockade on it, and then of course they couldn't buy ready-made clothing, so they um, developed their own style. Well, captivity clothing can be your very own style, and I have. Uh, even though I have a new pair of boots, my old ones are so comfortable, but they look awful. They're all worn out and scratched up, but I have a skirt that matches. It's all frayed at the at the bottom and at the waistline, and uh, I just thought what a what a neat look that is for a type of style, captivity clothing. And then, of course, we have captivity casserole, and that's when I get so far down where there's only a few things left, and... Uh, I have to use it all up and make something good with it, but there's only a little bit of everything and how to make a delicious casserole. See, these are little how-to books that you could write. Um, how about captivity correspondence, you know? Uh, keeping a record of correspondence back and forth with someone during captivity. Now, a very good friend of mine uh, has a dollhouse, and uh, she's uh, she's younger than me, but she's still from the olden days. And uh, so she sent me pictures of her dollhouse, and I I have an old dollhouse. I got it Goodwill 20 years ago, but I just let the children that come to visit play with it, and I never did anything uh, fancy with it. Well, she inspired me because I looked at her dollhouse, and I thought, I'm going to fix that dollhouse up. And I started to fix it up, and I painted it, and on the inside I've been scraping old wallpaper and stuff off of it. It was just... Uh, in really bad shape and uh, so she said uh, you're going to have a furniture delivery and she sent me furniture for that dollhouse <laughs> and um, so now we have a we have correspondence you know about these dollhouses and how about a captivity care package have you ever thought about that um, I don't send Mr. S to the post office anymore uh, because it's just one more thing he has to stand in line for so um, but I think everyone should be proficient in knowing how to pack a package uh, nicely so that it won't be damaged on the inside and what to put in it uh, to make a captivity care package for people who are isolated. You remember we used to go to the uh, thrift stores and find Depression Era glass. Well, now you can make uh, captivity era things. And uh, you never know when something might end up in one of these thrift stores that says made during captivity on them. So you can start your own culture, uh, captivity culture. You can even make your own line for your own use at home, your own line of makeup, hair care, and skin care. And you, all you have to do is look up the uh, ingredients and uh, go for it. And sometime I'll come here with my uh, chocolate... Um, face makeup and uh, other things from from my kitchen cabinet <laughs> so to thrive at home go further than is necessary at whatever you do and uh, take an idea that take a good idea and go beyond run wild with it and uh, so to thrive start out uh, with prayer and pray throughout the day you know pray without ceasing you can pray while you're just while you're working and while you're doing other things and um, besides formal prayer the other thing you can do that helps you is to build character if you build character that's the basis of all this you know I talked to you about that scripture in um Second Peter chapter 1, I think it's verse 5 through 8, where it talks about add to your faith virtue and your virtue knowledge. Well, you know, uh, your faith is your foundation of everything else. And so be sure to develop character. And I've given you several several scriptures that you can that have lists in them, like Philippians 4 8 has a list. You can use each one of those words as part of your character development add them to your character and uh, remember I told you what a character was it used to be a, a tool that carved into stone in the ancient times 
And so uh, a character would be a letter, uh, someone's initial, that would be a character. And so character is something you carve into your your soul, into your personality. You add it to your life. And Philippians 4, 8 was one of them. And um, I'm trying to think what the other one was. Galatians 5, 22 was another one. A lot of these had lists in them. You can use those words and add those to your character. And there's another notebook for you. And you're going to be busy. And then um, a serious study. Who was it? It was in um, Wives and Daughters. And Hyacinth was rather frustrated with her daughter, Cynthia. And she said she just needs to settle down to a a, a good um, study uh, in in character or something like that. And so, um, so that's what we need to do. And then there is the uh, second Peter chapter 1 verse 5 through 8 add to your faith virtue and to your virtue knowledge and to knowledge self-control etc and learn about these things and learn when they when to add them you know and um, so to thrive pray and exercise you know i was listening to i can't even tell you who it was somebody on youtube while i was washing dishes was talking about how uh, people in captivity that fared better, that came out healthy, that were uh, that didn't lose their their will, uh, were the ones that had a faith, who prayed a lot and prayed with others, and who continued to learn and to create, and who exercised, and who had uh, good nutrition. They fared a lot better. And they didn't come out all broken down mentally. So, pray, exercise, learn, learn something, learn something new, learn some new thing. I have been trying to learn about the uh, the Anglo's and the Saxons and the uh, Vikings, and so I listen to his historical YouTube videos while I do other things about where these people came from, how they got their names, and um how how the countries were formed um because you have to learn something and then also learn something that benefits the home the way that that would benefit the home is keeping your mind sharp and alive and knowing something it's amazing how much you, people think that they're going to be overloaded with with uh, in their mind if they learn too much well, well the only time you're overloaded is by that noise out there by the information that the media gives you that's just too much and it's too much to you can't use it and the media likes to keep you in a constant stage of uproar in your life and they never have any solutions it's gone on forever they just they'll all and when they have when you've lost your fear of what they're predicting and what they're projecting they will invent something else and i understand they're going to now project um uh, climate change as a, as the next source of fear on us and I wanted to warn you I don't like to leave you on a sour note but I wanted to warn you people who are thinking of um, taking the VAX uh, that this is uh, trading a piece of cloth on your face now I've never worn on MASK but you're thinking of trading a piece of cloth they're saying if you will get this VAX you don't have to wear that piece of cloth on your face but you are trading a piece of cloth on your face that can be taken off at any time, can be removed. You're trading it for a permanent poison in your body that goes through your out your epidermis, which is the um, your immune system begins. What I meant was your immune system begins with your skin, your outer skin, and any time that's compromised by poking it, by opening it, uh, by inserting some kind of something in your tissues or your uh, bloodstream, you're, you're being compromised and you need to read the ingredients. And, uh, you know, many of us read ingredients on packages. We don't want to get too much sodium. We don't want to get too much, you know, artificial. And, um, you know, a lot of those things that we avoid that are on the packages of fake food, <laughs> They're in that VAX, and you need to really ask yourself if this is going to provide permanent damage in your body. And um, 
while I don't believe in uh, the MASK, I also know that it is a lot less harmful than uh, some permanent damage. And I would not subject your children to it either because they don't wait and let them have a choice when they're adults, when they're of um, consenting age. Uh, don't force things like this that may change their RNA and their DNA and that sort of thing. It's also experimental and it's not really ever been uh, approved. So I want everyone to be careful of that. And uh, so that's why I'm saying that is because I said pray, exercise, good nutrition. Because sometimes these uh, these chemicals and these drugs can change uh, the way our body uh, processes everything. And I'm not saying that I'm in perfect health, but I, uh, but I don't want to compromise <laughs> what health I have left. So, uh, so pray, exercise, learn, good nutrition, create, um, think how to think, learn how to think, retrain your thinking, read Philippians 4, 8, and retrain your thinking. Um, also, practice deliberate living, deliberate, slow liver, living. Um, read something aloud so that you can modulate, learn to remember <laughs> Hyacinth told, uh, I don't know, was it, was it Molly or or hi, uh, Cynthia, modulate, modulate your tone, dear. Learn how to modulate, modulate your tone. You can take lessons. You can learn uh, a language. You can uh, take art. I'm still taking. I've missed a lot of my art classes, but I, um, I'm going to keep trying to make it. And uh, then at the end of captivity, you can say, look. There's that wall of paintings that I did during captivity, or maybe that's a, a wall of. Uh, something else that you did or a collection of something else you made and um, I remember years ago when my husband was away a lot every time he went away I uh, it was during the 80s when um, little cushions and pillows and embroidery things were, um, were were quite they were out there you know you could buy the kits and you could in magazine every magazine would have one you could copy so I'd make a little cushion and now I have some cut some little decorative cushions that I made each time and so so learn to do th things and increase your abilities and work on your mind to think to think right that's really your mind is the most important thing because you can mechanically do all this work at home and not benefit from it and not benefit anybody else because of your attitude so you need to make sure that you know this is a very feminine thing and women especially at home uh, have the opportunity to be very uh, feminine and womanly and quite the opposite of the masculine in the homemaking and just being a homemaker so to thrive go further than is necessary further than required and uh, think good thoughts and stay away from bad news I, I know it's hard isn't it I don't have television and I don't have the news coming in but you know it's out around you. You 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 sense what's going on, and somebody will always tell you. So it's very hard to uh, escape it. But it's really important for somebody at home to be uh, out from under the stress and creating an atmosphere that uh, where it's not there. And I always enjoy going to church because in uh, where we live we kept it open but you know there's not any of that discussion we've had church dinners and we've had um, other activities and they don't even talk about it it's just a different it's like they want to be in a different world so uh, the reason I don't like to talk too much about it is because in conversation with other people it's always interesting to see how long it's going to take before they start mentioning the war um, is they're only repeating what they've heard on the media and the media likes it because they know they're going to broadcast it and then you're just going to discuss it more and more and their subject is going to be your subject they're going to choose the subject and then you're just going to perpetuate it but um, in the circles that I'm running in they don't uh, they don't talk about it. they're not interested in it I guess they're bored with it so this is such a an opportunity and such a wonderful time and I have learned recently how to um, 
I want to avoid buying things from the stores that uh, are investing in things that I don't approve of. So I've been trying to buy stuff that's a different product straight from the company, and it's very expensive. So, I mean, that would be the real price, wouldn't it? Because uh, these big box stores get the cheaper prices, and but the price of a real good product is pretty high. So what I've been doing is taking something like a really nice bottle of shampoo that doesn't have all those phosphates in it and everything that's expensive and just using less of it and using it less often. Uh, another thing that I like to do is buy a really good straw broom um, but I don't wear it out, wear it to death. I calculate <laughs> when I'm going to need to sweep. It's just before someone is coming or um, just before something else and so that I'm not always you know so I don't wear the broom out quite as fast so I'm getting higher quality things but not using them um, as liberally and uh, so that's just a new uh, a new way because we are used to going out and getting stuff quite cheaply and uh, if if it wears out we can just go get another one well I'm not willing to do that anymore and um, so also the idea of developing character while we're home and I know not all of you are in total captivity but in a way we feel it even if you're not like me and you, you try to stay on the property um, but you can develop use it as a chance to develop character and one good way to develop character get yourself on an exercise or stretching exercise program and stay on it that helps build character and builds uh, your ability to withstand um, hard something hard so ladies I know that I have uh, talked a long time today and I hope you got a few things done I'm very glad to see you and I hope I'm always wishing that I could come back more often and I've always got a big page of notes that I never get around to and I hope that you will um, leave me a comment I really appreciated all those comments that you left me last time um, and I know that it takes time out of your what you're doing, and I know how busy you are. And uh, one thing I wanted to leave you with is this. If you want to thrive and you want to build character, obey yourself. You know, how many times have you made a list, and, and you look at the list and you don't do any of it? You just don't obey yourself. <laughs> so make a list and obey it. <laughs> make a list and see if you can get everything done on it. That is an interesting uh, experience, isn't it? So ladies, I hope you will keep in good health and get plenty of sleep. Sleep is such a great refresher and a great healer and uh, just uh, all around good things. I know when people have tried to improve their health and they want to lose weight, mostly talk about the food, but uh, it involves a lot of other things. It's exercise and it's fresh air and it's, uh, it's good thinking and it's sleep, lots of good sleep. So. I uh, hope you'll leave a comment and thank you so much for coming and hope you got a few things done and I'll talk to you later. Bye.